What's up y'all? I'm Tom. This is Like a Math Class. In this video we're going to talk about special integrals that you should be aware of, that you know that they exist, that you can work with. Pretty straightforward. Let's get to it. So these special integrals are all included in your IB formula booklet. So you don't need to memorize these. Just know that they exist just like you know that the special derivatives that align with these also exist. Just want to make sure that you're using them properly. So the first one is the integral of cosine of x is sine of x plus c. The integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x plus c. This is very similar to the derivatives and this is why I say just know they exist and go to your formula booklet because you don't want to mix up that negative sign when you're doing the derivatives or you're doing the integrals because they're so similar. So just check the formula booklet. The other one is what you would probably expect. The integral of e to the x is indeed e to the x, just like the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And then finally is the integral of 1 over x. That is equal to the natural logarithm of the absolute value of x plus c. So let's look at an example where we use these. If this is our derivative, find the general expression for y, which just means integrate this. So we're going to take the integral of dy of dx, and that's going to be equal to the integral of 5 over x plus sine x minus 3, all with respect to x. We like to put parentheses around those, so we know this whole thing is being integrated with respect to x. So up above, we just said we can integrate 1 over x. But what about this 5 here? What do we do with that? Well, that's just a constant times that 1 over x. So when we're integrating, all we have to do is think of this as 5 times this function here. So when we start integrating this thing, we're going to have 5 times the integral of 1 over x is ln times the absolute value of x. The integral of sine x is negative cosine x. So we're going to subtract cosine of x and then... The integral of negative 3 is just going to be minus 3x. And of course, we're going to throw on that plus c on there. And this is our y function. Not a whole lot more that we can do with this. Nothing, None of these things could be really be simplified. So we're kind of done right there. That was pretty easy. Too easy, as a matter of fact. Let's do one that's a little bit more complicated where we've got a boundary condition and we have to work to find that plus c. We have to find out what that value is. But before we find that value, find that like button down below and hit the thumbs up. We're going to find g of x when g prime is equal to e of x minus 3 cosine of x. And we know in the original function g of x that when we have pi for our input, 0 will be our output. All right, so let's integrate g prime of x with respect to x. And that's going to be equal to the integral of e to the x minus 3 cosine x with respect to x. You know what, pause for a second here and just note all the notation that I've been doing. This is the notation that you should be using when you're doing your work, either on your homework or on assessments. So make sure you're following along with this and not just throwing numbers and just doing integrals without the proper notation because these are things that help make your work much more clear and easy to follow and easy to understand. So the integral of e to the x is e to the x. The integral of negative 3 cosine x, well, we're going to continue to hold on to that negative 3. And the integral of cosine x is sine x. And then we're going to add a c on to the end of that. And that is going to be what we call g of x. Now, we said up above that g of pi is equal to 0. So that means that 0 equals e to the pi minus 3 sine of pi plus c. All right, so 0 equals e to the pi minus 3. Now let's see, sine, sine is going this way. Here it's going to be a, a, like the same as, as 180 degrees, that's pi. Sine is always our y value, so if we're over here, that's going to be 0. So sine of pi is going to be 0 plus c. So 0 equals e to the pi minus 0 plus c. So c is equal to minus e to the pi. All right, well, that's kind of strange. But let's put that back in. So g of x is equal to e to the x minus 3 sine of x minus 
e to the pi. So that should be our function. Well, that seems kind of weird. Uh, so I put it into Desmos for us, so that way we could see what this thing looks at. Like, how does this thing have pi equaling zero? And so here you can see that I've got g of x up on the left, and I've got this function showing up, and it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to zoom. Oh, wow, that's what that looks like. All right, so there's my function, and I want to know when x was pi, we should get zero. So that means this spot right here should be pi, because there's our y value of zero, and look at that. Okay, pi is zero, so that's that exact boundary condition. Awesome. So those are our special integrals. Uh, that's how we use the special integrals with some boundary conditions, and we'll continue to incorporate these throughout our other videos as we get into slightly more complex integral topics. And I hope that was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.